Just ask questions. Okay. All right. So let me start. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another of our I Saw the Light testimonies. Today, my guest is a new friend of mine, Mark Lowe. We met as part of a small connection group at church, First Christian Church. And Mark came to, uh, to First Christian as part of a prison ministry that we support alongside ministries. And during one of our Bible studies, he mentioned that he grew up Catholic. And then he told me this incredible story, which you're going to hear today. Hi, Mark. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, so let us pray. Merciful Father, thank you for allowing us to help spread the good news of Jesus' true salvation all over the world. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Holy Spirit, empower us as we bring glory to your name. And in the words of our Savior, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. All right. Amen. Um, okay, so tell me about your childhood. Where did you grow up? What's your what, your family heritage? Okay, I'm a Mexican American, born in Tucson, Arizona, 1963. Um, our heritage is uh, Catholic background. Uh, I grew up in uh, Glendale, Arizona, uh, till about 12. Then we moved to Maryville in uh, Arizona. And uh, throughout my youth, I mean, we went to Our Lady of Perpetual Help Church in, in Glendale. My brother was an altar boy, and uh, we had to go to Catholic school on uh, catechism on catechism. the weekends. But yeah, you went to catechism. public school. I went to public school, but public we went school. to catechism mm -hmm. on the weekends. Catechism on weekends. And... Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I grew up, like I said, going, knowing the Catholic religion and never really changing. That so, um, uh, how, how often did you go to confession? Uh, once a week, once, once a week, week. Yeah, my mom would take us to confession. We do all the Lent things, you know, give this up, give that up, uh, um yeah so i grew up as a as mm -hmm. a catholic young man mm -hmm. did you ever read the bible growing up i never read the bible i never read the bible in um in in no we didn't have a bible in our house we had missalettes we had uh yeah. mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh but yeah i want to tell you something about i remember uh uh, we were coming home from church one day, and like I said, my son was the, uh, I, my my brother was a altar boy, mm -hmm. and uh, we were coming home from church. I remember sitting in the back. My brother was in the front. My mom was driving, and I said, "Mom, did you know that Jesus is the Messiah?" And my brother, who was the altar boy older than me, no, he's not. He's Christ, you know. He kept saying like, this. I go, he's the Messiah. Yeah. And, uh, and you learned a no, new he's word. Not. He's, <laughs> yeah, he was just in a new word, you know. Yeah. But from yeah. from the earliest time, I remember Christ remi reminding or revealing to me who he was. Okay. Even though I didn't really know it, I knew it somehow, yeah. some way. Right, right. Well, we, I mean, as Catholic, we always grew up as Jesus is the son of God, part of the Trinity, you know, the, right. the, uh, you know, um, you know, pro, yeah. the, you know the cross and, you didn't know, know why I did Sun, those things. Cross. Yeah, yeah, you know, it was just like, you're just, it's, it, like, it becomes a, it, um, a habit. Emotions. Things like yeah. That. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Going by a like, church. Yeah. Going and, by uh, a cemetery. Every, yeah. Yeah. Going in oh. and, and entering genuflecting, going, getting your, um, uh, tipping. Holy dipping water. Your hand in holy water. <laughs> dipping your hand, holy water, saying to our yeah. father up and down. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, so uh, just tell me, Theo, you know, like your high school years, and uh, you had some prodigal years there. Uh, so, uh, well, what, yeah, how, I was uh, mm -hmm. basically I was a 
I began wrestling. I, w- I lived in a domestic violence home. Oh, dear. Okay. okay. My dad never went to church. He was a, he was a good, I mean, he was a father, productive in his job and stuff, but he always, you know, uh, fought with my mother, and there was a lot of domestic violence there. And uh, one time I had to protect my mother, and uh, as a nine-year-old boy, had to crack my dad's head open it with a one, one of them old uh, Pepsi bottles, them big quart bottles. And from the time on, I've always felt, even though it might have not have been true, but I felt rejected by my father mm-hmm. for doing that. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, so I grew up like kind of distancing. Every time my father would come in, come in a room, I would leave. You know, just uh, that kind of stuff. I remember arguing. I would sit behind my room with a twenty, with a twenty-two. Uh, should I shoot him? Should I kill him? Should I? Wow. You know, those those type of ways. Just as a young boy, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I mean, I was at to that point sometimes. You know, just so fearful. And but I remember standing at a door with a gun, with a rifle like that, with one bullet just ready to do it and so wow. finally one time I just like I saw him choking my mother out and she was turning blue and I just you better stop better stop and I ended up cracking his head open and he, uh, just remembering the blood and, and oh, we wow. left yeah. home for about a month mm-hmm. and lived with my grandmother and uh, she was a real devout Catholic what they called in the Mexican community of Guadalupana she the Mexican Mary, you know, mm-hmm, she was mm-hmm. quite involved in the church. Uh, she she was just a, a prayer warrior for the church. And um, I thank God for her and my mother's prayers that I am a mm-hmm. Christian man today. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, um, I began uh, finding my identity in wrestling. I became a good uh, wrestler. I was a state champion wrestler, county wrestler. Um, and so I found my identity in sports for, for a while till my junior mm-hmm. year where I mm-hmm. tore some, I tore my rotor cru- cuff mm-hmm. in a tournament and um, I was unable to continue to wrestle until yeah. the next year and it was just never mm-hmm. the same i didn't right. have the motion so i began drugs alcohol drinking and just running amok running amok wow. uh i found myself addicted uh to crack cocaine mm. i got married went to the army uh came back uh still continuing in my addiction now to alcohol and to crack cocaine for almost 30, 30 years of life. Wow. I, uh, yeah, I finally ended up, my addiction got so, even though I was one of what they call a, a it's like a, what do you call them, misnomers of names, uh, or I was a functioning addict. I, I held a job. I held a job, went to work, but I still did my drugs and daily. Mm-hmm. Uh, crack cocaine became my idol. Mm. And uh, I just like really lost. And even though on Sundays I would go to church, Catholic church, I'd go to church, but no change. I'd go to church and uh, I'd stop at the drive through liquor and buy my 12 pack of beer so I could uh, drink it watching football or something or doing something at the house. There was just no heart change for me. I right. had a, now, did I had you, a relic. Did, did go you go ahead. to confession during that time before you went uh, to yes, the I church? Would. Yep. I, I still would go to confession and confess my sins to the father and um, to a priest. To a priest, yeah, to the priest. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, which uh, really then, didn't do anything. No, I didn't oh. know any better. I mean, I it just, right. I went through the motions of what I knew, what I grew up knew. That's what I'm supposed to do. Then I had a bad experience with a father or a priest. Mm-hmm. Uh, one day I got shot at. 
and uh, I just said, wow, I remember hearing the bullet just flying by my ear. Woo! Wow. And, and, and I just said, you know what, I've had enough. I went and I told my wife and uh, we both drove down to our, our Lady of Perpetual Help. And uh, I was a little, you know, uh, induced with alcohol and drugs. And he he sent me out of it. He said, don't you? I mean, I wasn't obnoxious. I was asking for help. And he got on my case, sent me out of here, sent me ne never to come back uh, like that again. I go, I'm asking for help. And he sent me out of there and I had a bad experience. Um, but I still kept going. I didn't lie. I, I switched churches. That's what I did. I still went to, I now I went to St. Augustine's parish, but mm -hmm. near, uh, near, more near my house. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but anyway, uh, my drug addiction finally uh, caused me to begin to do armed robberies to pay for my drug That's what addiction. it leads to. Yep, yep. Okay, yep. wow. And so I ended up in county jail, and I really felt, you know, like God was calling me. God was telling me to change. My mother had, you know, she... God bless her heart. She, I mean, she tried and tried to get me to change, and um, I couldn't. I couldn't change them. Out. Religion wouldn't change me. And one day, I remember I was in the county jail, and I was sitting on. I was going to every type of church service there was. I was going to Catholic service. I was going to Christian service. And right there, those two, uh, just back and forth, I began to read the Bible for myself there in, in jail. And um, I just began to know who God was. And he wasn't the God that I had learned in religion. God, this God uh, uh, was not the one that was ready to punish me and kill me, strike me with lightning, send me to hell. Uh, this was not the God that I had begun to learn about in the Bible. The God I began to learn about as I read about was a God of grace, love, and mercy, and that he was a good father. I mean, uh, if you think about it, yeah, I think it's in John 17 when when uh, Jesus said, uh, I, I came to reveal to you your name. And then he said, oh, righteous father. Mm -hmm. And that clicked with me that God wanted a relation with me, not a not a religion. Right. And right. so I began to understand who more the father was and that he yeah. was good and that he loved me and he accepted me despite my faults. Yes, he disciplines us. Yes, he. but it's out of love and not out of uh, I'm going right. to destroy you because you did this. Right. And so, again, one day in jail, uh, going in between Catholic Church, and um, I was just seeking God. I was mm -hmm. seeking God, and uh, I was up on the top bunk, and I had, they gave us these little uh, rosary round circle things, and I remember uh, praying, trying to pray it. I was reading the instructions. I didn't really know how to pray it, but I was praying it. Uh, Hail Marys, Our Fathers, uh, all these things. And then in a small, still voice in my heart, I remember uh, the these words. It says, should you be doing that knowing now what you know? That you only there's only one mediator between God and man, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. That... No longer do you need uh, Jesus Christ is alone the Savior. He alone is the one who can save you. He's the only one that died for your sins and can forgive your sins. There is no other way to Christ. There is no other name. And so all these scriptures kept flooding my heart. But Lord, I'm gonna have to really, I'm gonna have to leave my culture. I'm gonna have to leave my tradition. He, and I felt this like you're getting it. That's what you're finding. Yes, I'm not a tradition. I'm not a culture. 
I am your father who I want a relationship with you. And I'm the one uh, that you are to be taught speaking to and praying to. And there, like I said, there's only one mediator between God, God and man. And that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's it. That's the truth. That is the truth. That's and, and, and um, you know, it's, and the other thing is, is that when, you know, you read the Bible, you read, um, Jesus warned us, Paul warned us, Peter warned us, all, you know, the, the letters in the New Testament, they all said, beware of false teachings, they're going to come, and, right. and that's, and that's it, and, and unfortunately, you know, you said it before, like, you didn't know any better. You know, I went through the same thing. You know, I didn't know any better, you know. So, mm -hmm. so if we're, and, and the, when, when we hear like, okay, this is, this is what you should be doing. And this is, you know, the, um, something in your heart's telling you like, okay, I'm going in the wrong direction. You know, wh where, where do I go? And somehow God, God puts in your path what you need to know when you right. realize it, that you're going in the wrong direction, you know? So I yeah. think that's, you know, that, that, that's pretty amazing. So, so continue your story. So, so like, like, um, like I said, I, I, um, I finally gave myself to Jesus Christ. I, <clears throat> I got born again, according to the scripture that, you know, and John 3 that very very I said <clears throat> to you must be born again and <laughs> so now I began to understand what the regeneration was what it meant to be a new creation and um but I still had some God still had a lot of work to do in me mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. as far as um I would pour myself into Christ and but I was still had a, having these um, performance measures. Uh, how do I say it? I still thought I had to perform for God. You know, right. I still, well, well, maybe if I do this for God, maybe if I do that for God, maybe if I, uh, uh, I my heart was still not right. I I understood grace that I didn't have to do nothing. It was undeserved favor that that God saved me, and by my faith. But yet I still I I think it was because the rejection of my father in my childhood that I still had to think I had to come to God mm -hmm. as a, you know in a performance way, right? And so I. I tried to do right, but the more I tried to do right, I, I felt I found myself falling short. And mm -hmm. I would like, God, I can't do this. God, mm -hmm. I give up. You know, mm -hmm. I just finally had to. And and that's all God really wanted me to was to really surrender. Say, you're right. You can't do it. Quit trying to save your child. Quit trying to make yourself good. Quit trying to uh, impress me with prayer. Quit trying to do all these things that you, I accept you. I love you for who you are. You, you are, are my child. Great. You are my son. You are um, born again into my family. Yes, I love you when you're good. I love you when you're bad. I love you. Mm -hmm. So finally I had to, uh, just accept that you know mm -hmm. i'm still trying to find my way and i went to prison for 15 years for armed robbery um in prison they had a um uh, a seminary so i ended up going to seminary there it was called chaplain's uh school of ministry so i ended up getting an aa degree in pastoral ministries wow and yeah, so you know, God used that time. Uh, I became uh, very involved in the church. There was a chaplain clerk for many of years. You know, um, even the chaplains would let me preach or teach. Or so, so God was using me in prison. It wasn't. I always told people this: there's two time, two types of ways to to do your time in prison. You can either spend time or invest time, and Anytime you invest your life in knowing Jesus Christ, that's mm -hmm. an investment in your life. 
That's mm-hmm. an investment mm-hmm. in your life and not only for yourself, but for others, because God mm-hmm. calls us to prepare us for ministry and for other, for other people's lives, the people that right. we run into daily. So, right. Right. So now, and, it, and it's, and it's, it's interesting because um, you were trying to figure out how to make God happy, how to, uh, how to uh, do good things on your own. But then when you surrendered yourself fully into God's will, he placed you where he thinks you would do well. And, um, and there you are, you, 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 you know, who would have, who would have thought, you know, when you yes. were, you know, when you were a kid in Catholic school that you would be, you know, um, yeah. uh, have to go to, go to seminary, you know, even though it's in prison, you still went to seminary, you know, all right. right. So I mean, that's, that's amazing. That's fantastic. Yes. And now, um, God actually uses me, um, uh, right now I've been teaching, uh, baptism classes over at, in new freedom. And okay. every time they have a baptism there, uh, God uses me to teach the baptismal class and, uh, intercessory prayer and, you know, God, God uses us wherever you allow him to be. Uh, that's right. That's right. Allow him that's to. right. That's right. That's how I started this podcast. You know, it was, was one of those things. And, and it, in fact, it was in church service when um, uh, Jerome was, was preaching and he, and he said, okay, everybody close your eyes now and just listen to what God is trying to tell you. And I so very clearly heard a voice crying in the wilderness. So, you know, mm-hmm. I do internet marketing for my job, you know, so I live on social media. I'm online constantly. That's my wilderness. So it's like, right. okay, so we're going to take, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to push the gospel out there, push the truth out there. That's, That's um, true. Uh, and because um, people are seeking, you know, what, and, and that's just because when you start seeking, I'm just, I'm missing something. Right. You know, you're, you know, and that's why I'm hoping that I have a ton of cat. I have a, a a slew of Catholic cousins still. And I pray for them every day. I'm hoping that yeah. you know, every time I see that one of them saw one of my posts on on Instagram, and I'm thinking, yes, yeah, I, I pray for her, Lord, please, you know, just right. just help her to start, you know, reading the Bible and 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 seeing it. So, do you do you still have um uh Catholic, Catholic family and 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 oh, friends? Yes, like I said, my father and his side but um all my brothers and sisters now and my sons are are we're all christians born again christians um and it all began starting god used me for that and now that none of them are catholic no more none of in my family except my dad um but i do believe he knows the way to uh, salvation is only through Jesus Christ, and you know what? I really stopped nitpicking <laughs> Catholics because the truth is, it is Jesus Christ. Right. It right. is He alone is salvation, but usually we don't hear it through uh, even the Apostles' Creed, even though it may say it, even though it may. Uh, it became it could it became so ritual to me yes. going through the motions that I never realized it. When I became a Christian, I heard what's this born again? I never heard that in, in Catholicism. No. No. I never heard no. I needed it. Uh we're no. told we're told that we're born again through salvation as a child when we're baptized we're baptized not. yeah that's, we're not i know that's not know. i'm sorry my catholic yeah. friends we're yeah. not <laughs> we're, we're, no that doesn't save you you don't go no, to heaven on your mother's uh <laughs> faith your dad's faith your grandma's yeah. faith you go through your acceptance of jesus christ through the power mm-hmm. of the holy spirit mm-hmm. when you accept jesus christ as your lord and savior that's yeah. the only way. Right. Somebody I, I was listening to, I forgot whom, is, is said, like, you know, we're not born Christian. We're not born Catholic. We're not born, you know, Protestant. We are born sinners. Okay. Yes. And, it, and, and, and as we can, we can, we have to make the decision to follow Jesus, you know, right. as, as an adult. I mean, you can, uh, a child can, a child can do it usually between, you know, eight, like around age eight or nine, ten, you know, the, 
the um, um, each person is different as a as a child growing up in the church as they so comprehend of accountability. Right. right, you have to understand that you know what what sin is and what salvation is, and if you don't have Jesus' salvation, you're going in the other direction. If you want to you want to go to heaven, and you can't buy your way into heaven, and unfortunately, no. that's what the Catholic Church teaches that you can literally buy your way into heaven. It doesn't yeah. work that way, you know. Um, uh, I always say that um, uh, if purgatory exists, then Jesus died for nothing, you know. That's right. Because that's, that's it. Perfect. That's that's yeah. that's the truth. That is the truth. I mean, so it's so to... evident, especially in uh, Luke uh, sixteen, where he's talking with Lazarus, and um, yes, and mm -hmm. uh, right, uh, uh, the rich man, and yeah, uh, Lazarus rich man. You know that wasn't a parable. That was not a parable. That was a uh, 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 something that the Lord was describing, um, because He used the name Lazarus. He right. did not make up this story, and he he spoke about only two places. There was no middle place. There was That's no right. uh, getting out of the bottom place after being good and uh well how long yeah you're gonna have to spend 480 years here before you pay for your sin jesus I, christ I, paid he said right. teletestai it is finished yeah. it is it's done finished. i paid your sin debt in full i That's paid right. it all completely you don't have any other way to salvation but me, the Lord Jesus Christ, right. I, paid, right. I paid it full and complete. No I other like, way. Um, you know, when um, the the other thief on the cross, you know, when oh, Jesus yes. said, today you yeah. will, be, will be with me in paradise. He says, well, oh, but you got to go to purgatory first, you know. And, and you got to get baptized. And, and, and you got to get baptized, you know, like. And, and you got to no, go do a few good <laughs> deeds. Right, no. exactly. Yeah, exactly. well, no. I'm a little tied up Daddy right now, God. Me in paradise, you know. So, um, so, and you can't get any more basic than that, you know. And no. um, you know, so um, so we didn't learn that. I mean, I mean, like I said, I grew up a Catholic, and uh, I never knew the plan of salvation, even though yeah. we read about Jesus, even though and we Bible knew stories. Yeah. yeah, I never knew that. I mean. What's this born again? What's this? Yeah. What's that? What? And yeah. uh, I mean, it, it it does take the Holy Spirit to to reveal this to you. I mean, and that's the other thing. Like you know, for me, the Holy Spirit was something up in heaven. You know, like right. it, it wasn't anything like now. It's like well, I've got the Holy Spirit in my heart. You know, and that's the relationship that I have with Jesus now that I never had before. I became born right. again and I realized that, you know, that I have the power of the Holy spirit in me. And, um, and, and you know, that's one of the great benefits of salvation, you know? So, um, you know, when we do have problems and we'll have problems because Jesus told us we will have trials, but he overcame, right. you know? So, so when we've got the Holy spirit to tell to, to remind us that and to help us with discernment and, and uh, self control, you know, and all the fruit, the fruit of the spirit. That's all. That's all part of it. And, mm -hmm. and that's what gives us this, a victory. Yeah, and as a Catholic, I missed out. I wouldn't say anything. But I was deprived of the Bible. I was deprived of a relationship with Jesus. And I was like, no, no, no. I'm making up now for all those years. You, let, let me tell you something. You know how I knew something changed because I remember even as a kid uh learning prayers and uh uh even though yeah yes we know the our father but um i always called god god mm -hmm. i always talked to him as god as a as a deity but not as a father but now i pray to a father somebody in relationship somebody not as a religion not as a deity but somebody who wants a relationship with me and i noticed right. some well why am i always praying uh dear father please help me through this well dear father um give me the wisdom i need i began to call on him as father and mm -hmm. not as god mm -hmm. no longer mm -hmm. no longer yes i know he's god 
But yes, mm -hmm. God is my father. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. So um, um, what are some final words that you'd like to say to our audience here? <clears throat> well, my dear audience, it's not about religion. It's about relationship. I know I've said that many times today. And if you really want to know the truth, ask. Ask God. Ask the Holy Spirit. Say, Lord, if I'm wrong, please reveal to me the truth. I want to know the truth about you. I want to know the truth about salvation. I want to know the truth about religion and relationship. God, just help me know who you really are. You sent your son to reveal you, reveal yourself to, to us. So I'm asking for it today. Just be sincere and God will reveal it to you. If your heart right. wants to know, God's not going to hold it back from you. He can mm -hmm. he sent his only begotten son to reveal who the father was to him. He even told in I'm John 14, he said, uh, they, the disciples said, Lord, show us the father. And he goes, haven't you been with me long enough? Yeah. And don't yeah. you know who I am? If you have seen me, you have seen the father. Okay. Jesus Christ was the exact replica, the image mm -hmm. of who the father was. Father was. Read mm -hmm. the scriptures for yourself. Okay. Read the That's word it. of God for yourself. Read the word of God and ask him who yourself is. The word logos is the word uh the word Jesus was the word That's that the word. God wanted to reveal to to the world. If you want to know the truth, reveal the reveal it to these people who, who are seeking the truth. Great, fantastic! Thank you, Mark. Okay. This has been wonderful. So, um, okay, so take stay tuned. We're going to be having more of these. So uh, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on social media. Um, thanks again, and God bless. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share this with your family and friends who need to know Jesus as their Savior. Remember this, Jesus didn't suffer torture and die so we could have religion. He died so he could have a personal relationship with you. Yes, you. He said in Revelation 3.20, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. So what are you waiting for? Click below where it says how to know Jesus. And if you like reading, check out my blog. Search through the archives for topics and Bible studies. Also check out the Christian Bookstore with hot picks on Christian books from Bible prophecy, biblical worldview, biographies, memoirs, and Christian fiction. The links are below. If you prefer to listen, check out my podcast. It's on your favorite podcast app. Subscribe so you don't miss out on new weekly episodes as well as special Bible study playlists. And finally, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And I pray that if you haven't already, you will soon see the light. Shalom and have a blessed day. I wandered so aimless, I filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light I saw the light, I saw the light No more darkness, no more night Now I'm so happy, no sorrow in sight Praise the Lord, I saw the light Man, I wandered alone Worries and fears I claim for my own Then like the blind man, God gave back his sight Praise the Lord, I saw the light I saw the light, I saw the light No more darkness, no more night Now I'm so happy, no sorrow in sight
was a fool to wander astray Straight is the gate and narrow the way Now I have traded the wrong for the right Praise the Lord, I saw the light I saw the light, I saw the light No more darkness, no more 